Are you a new project manager or thinking about becoming a project manager and are wondering what are the responsibilities of a project manager? Well, I got you covered. Stay tuned in this video because you're going to check it out. And if you also need help to kind of build your project management skills, I have you covered. I have a free webinar which goes through the five fab fundamentals of project management. Really the critical things that are going to help you be successful. Things like charters, etc. You're going to have to check it out to get the details, but it's highly worth it and it's free. I placed the link under this video just for you. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Adriana Girdler and you've landed on the best practical project management channel out there. I am definitely biased, but I'm so glad that you're here and I hope you sub subscribe because it really helps our community grow. Now, if you're interested in the um, responsibilities of a project manager, well then <laughs> let's get to it. Planning the project. This is a no brainer and if you are even considering project management, then you have to realize you need to plan for the project. What is the project plan? What is everything that you and your team needs in order to be successful? Now, when you do project planning, particularly in the initial stages of your project, you want to create a baseline project plan. And so this is really what are all the baseline items you need that you know as of today, this moment, in the beginning stages of your project that's going to ensure your success. The cool thing is you use that baseline and then your project plan grows from that. But it's there to set as a benchmark so that you understand where you are moving from. Now, how do you do this? I have some great videos for you. Go to the YouTube search bar, put Adriana Girdler WBS, that rec uh, acronym is a work breakdown structure, which teaches you how to create that baseline, and then you link your scheduling with it too. So project planning, really, really important responsibility, and definitely check out my other videos on this topic, which is really important for you as a project manager. Risk and change management. Now, before I hop into this tip, I want to remind you to don't forget to grab your seat on my free webinar that I told you about earlier on in this intro of this video. Definitely check it out. Don't forget the link is below this video. Now, risk and change management. This is something that really can sometimes get lost in the shuffle of trying to execute tasks in the project, but is actually a really critical responsibility for a project manager. Risk, why risk? Because guess what? Every project has risk and if you don't do some sort of risk uh, identification and then put together some mitigation and con contingency plans, then your project can derail really, really quickly. And why change management? Because everything you're doing is about change. You're probably implementing a new uh, product, line, um, production line, uh, activity. It's usually something that you're delivering that is usually new or upgraded to an end user. And so you want to make sure that you thought about what are the things that you have to ensure your stakeholders are aware of so that they can successfully manage this new, um, this new item that you are going to be delivering from a project perspective. So that becomes really important. Understand those elements, risk management, change management is really only going to make everything so much easier for you, your team, and ultimately the end user when they get your final deliverable. Firefighting. Oh, darn. I'm telling you, I wish every project went perfectly and according to plan as per the benchmark that you created that baseline. It doesn't. It doesn't. Why? Because in the beginning stages of all projects, you have you have you don't have all the information and as you progress in your projects you start to get more information and more items that are changing things and you have risks and all that other fun stuff that feeds into the project plan and basically into your project. So what happens, then you are scrambling in order to ensure that you're keeping things on scope and on time and in budget. So what do you do? You firefight in order to do that. Now, the nice thing is if you have a solid project plan, it's not like you can deviate too much from your plan, but you still have to firefight to keep things on track. So firefighting is a big part of that responsibility. It can be stressful but I don't want you to get so stressed out because if you're firefighting 100% of the time, then I would challenge for you to say to yourself, did I properly plan? Do I have the right people? Why is it that everything we planned is not coming to fruition? That's a big, bigger issue and something you have to investigate as to why that's occurring. But firefighting, when things pop up, throughout a plan and you have to put it out, the key is you just want to put out a little fire. You don't want to put out a big fire. So do not ignore any issue that is kind of in your mind's eye or in the back of your head. You're going, hmm, doesn't feel right. Follow your instinct and put out that little fire because I promise you it probably is a little bit of an ember burning and you don't want it to go out of control. 
evaluating performance and progress. Okay. This can sometimes be hard for individuals, particularly if you are new to the role of a project manager or even just new to the role of managing people because that's what a project manager does. Yes, we have scope, time, and budget, documentation, all that other stuff, but we're managing people, our team, subject matter experts, to execute their tasks in a fashion that is respectful, that is aligned with our expectations, and that it's ultimately getting to the end result. So if the world was perfect, everybody would follow your ways of working because they signed off on the charter, they all agreed to everything, you've set it up perfectly, and people would just do what it is that they said they would do. However, that's not reality. Now, at times you are gonna have to pull someone aside. You are gonna have to talk about their performance. You are gonna have to find out how their progress is and you may have to course correct them. That can be an uncomfortable conversation, but it's not meant, it shouldn't be one that you ignore either. So some cool techniques is if you go to YouTube search bar, Adriana Girdler Charter, your charter becomes a powerful document that you're gonna use in your kickoff that allows for you to set up all those expectations and have people sign off on it. That's a really easy tool to use that takes away any emotional charge when you have to talk about people's performance because you just have to say, hey, we agree to all of this. You signed off on this document and now all of a sudden it's not happening. So what's going on? And is there any roadblocks I can help you remove? And do that privately between the two of you. If you find you're still not getting where you need to go with let's say a particular person and you've done your due diligence and you've been respectful, you're gonna have to escalate it, FYI. But again, that is the role of a project manager. Documentation, surprise, surprise. This should not surprise any of you if you've watched any of my videos and if you know anything uh, about what I talk about when it comes to project management. But again, you, this could be your first video. So let me talk about documentation. Yeah, project manager's responsibility is to ensure they have really good documentation and that they're organized. Why is that so critical? Because you want to eliminate assumptions, you want to make sure everybody's clear on expectations, everyone understands what they're supposed to be delivering on. And you're not going to get that clarity by just verbally saying it because people will forget. It's through the documentation and the management of the key pieces of documentation that you're going to be using as a project manager that is going to help ensure that. So yes, document away. Please, please, please document. Timely communication. Now, as a project manager, it is all about communication. Um, now, I feel like I say that in every tip. It's all about this, it's all about that. Okay, let me clarify it. It's an important part of your project management rules that you need to have is timely communication. You're trying to keep everyone head of um, the ball, so to speak. Is that right? Head of the ball, head of the curve. Karina, what is it? Head of the... <laughs> Anyway, let me bypass this, okay? A little bit of a brain uh, fart. Can I say that on YouTube? But anyway, uh, you wanna get, ensure that people understand what's expected of them. Uh, the communication is just clear, so if something changes, you do that timely. Even after meetings when there's agreements, ensure that you do your summary notes and you send them out immediately. Waiting, I find, when you, the longer you wait, the more people forget, versus if you, like, in a timely way, let them know the things that they need to be aware of. It just helps them to do a better job. So communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't do it last minute. Do it as in much in advance as possible, particularly if someone needs to be on an agenda or you're trying to deliver something. Don't ask at the last minute. Again, just be timely, be organized. Tie it all into all the other stuff that you do as a project manager. Team inspiration and motivation. What? Why are we even talking about things like that? Well, let me tell you, there's a really important reason why. Your project team does not report into you. They report into a manager who grades your performance, etc. So as a result, how do you get everyone who, by the way, has other projects that they're probably working on, other responsibilities, along with your tasks that you have to ensure get completed, 
Well, that's through inspiration and, and motivation. You want people to be excited about working on your project. Um, and being and working with you, generally speaking. So have their back, have everything ready for them. Remove any roadblocks so it makes working on the tasks for the project that you're all working on together much easier to execute. So you do that through motivation, you inspire them. Be the lead. If you have expectations of them, make sure that you emulate those expectations. So if you expect things in a timely fashion from your team, you make sure you give them stuff in a timely way. So that's just really an important way to motivate people who don't report into you. And that's something you're going to have to learn how to do well as one of your responsibilities. Facilitating meetings. Okay. If you're a project manager or you're getting into the role or even if you're a team member, you know it's all about meetings, right? You have your kickoff meeting, you have your sponsor meeting, you have your brainstorming meeting, you have steering committee meetings, you have, uh, hopefully you're not doing update meetings, but we can talk about that at a later date. You are doing resolution meetings, you're doing requirement meetings, you're getting teams together in order to get approvals done, so you have approval meetings. That's how we get a lot of things done, collectively as a group. We individually may be doing our tasks, but then we have to come together as a team and ensure that everyone's in agreement, and those are usually done through meetings. So, you better learn how to facilitate a meeting really, really well. And sometimes we're not taught that. I got your bag covered. I've told you before my slave project management course, if I haven't already mentioned it before, is I actually talk about meetings and how to run really well run meetings and the templates to do that as part of project management because it is so integrated into everything you do so i got your back covered definitely check it out just so that you can have some knowledge around it but meeting facilitation pick up any skill set you can it's just going to help you be smoother in the execution of the things you need to do now don't forget to save your seat to my free webinar on those fab five fundamentals that I was talking about much earlier on in the introduction of this video. So if you stay tuned, great, it's under this video, check it out at the link. It is free and at least that's going to help you as a new project manager, just some really key fundamental stuff. So until the next video, see you later.